Hey, Richard. Good hey, Mike. morning. How are you doing? Yep. I'm doing just great. How's that vacation coming along? <laughs> oh, it's going great. And uh, no vacation is complete without an on-shape update, of course. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I just uh, I told the uh, the entire internet yesterday that you were on vacation. And uh, voila, here you are this morning. So Hey, yeah, I probably got a little tan. I've been to the beach, went to the Cape for a few days. And, uh, you know, well, uh, yeah. I'll keep, uh, I'll, I'm going back to the beach after I leave here. I'm not that far away. So. <laughs> All right. Well, good. Enjoy the rest of that vacation. So we got a great update today. Some things that got me really excited. So why don't we get started and uh, see what we got? Yeah, let's, uh, let's do it. Let's uh, take a look at some of the improvements on shape in the second, uh, you know, we got the last day of the month here. You came out uh, Thursday night, uh, you know, about six o'clock Eastern time and uh, a little, and, uh, little bit early, you know, so a little, yeah, a little bit early. I think uh, a couple of the first comments that were uh, that I saw in the forums today yeah, uh, yeah. mentioned that it was a nice little surprise. So yeah, yeah, nobody had was hovering over that F5 button in their browser. You know, it was really uh, everybody was just uh, taken by surprise as well as me. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right. It's all right. It's a pleasant surprise. So um. Yeah, you know, just taking a look at the top features here, Richard. What are, what are your thoughts on the really just kind of general overview? Yeah, you, know? you know, I think everybody that, that listens to our show knows that I'm no surfacing guy, but I love to see these new surfacing, um, this new surfacing functionality being added with just about every single release. Um, and I looked at, you know, I looked at the ISO clients, and I, I, I guess we'll get to that in a minute. I don't need, didn't even know what an ISO client was. I had to go and look that up, and and by golly, I did. You know, I found out what. The, uh, the actual definition of an ISO client. Um, but are. when you, you, you know, when you look at the video and how it's applied, I can see, I can definitely see uh, how people are going to be excited about this. So. Yeah. 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 This is, you know, this is for people that need precision in their design work. Right. You know, and that's, uh, you know, why that's been added, you know, a number of other things on the surfacing side, the dihedral analysis, another very powerful way of understanding you know, what's going on in your 3D models, you know, with, you know, it, it's really a, a very high end way of understanding the quality of your surfacing. I am personally extremely excited about the inspection table. So I'm going to dive in deep on that <laughs> one. Um, that that's my favorite uh, this particular time, because I, I just I just love that, uh, you know, that it's built right into the drawing. Have, yeah, having everything right there at your fingertips. Yeah, 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 this is uh, something I believe strongly in. So let's uh, let's get into this. I'm going to actually unmute this and allow Roy to explain to us uh, the dihedral analysis here on this drone frame. So, uh, and, but it's and, a new evaluation tool, essentially, yeah. right? And kudos to Roy; he did a great job with this. Uh, he really this, did uh, with putting this all together. So we really should have Roy on sometime. Roy is actually, you know, a, a long time. Uh, you know, he was uh, in the SolidWorks community for quite some time in the reseller world in the New Jersey, you know, kind of mid Atlantic kind of area, and uh, you know, has been with OnShape for quite some time. He he uh, he is a person that helps our customers successfully in, in extremely well. So I really want to appreciate. That. And he's uh, done a. Done some uh, user group meeting presentations for us, and I think he might be doing one later this month. So, yeah. New with this release, you'll find a show analysis tools menu located at the bottom right corner of your screen. Well, what do you think of that, Richard? Yeah, I, you, you know, I was, <laughs> I didn't want to say anything while the video was going, but I, I, how cool is that? I mean, something so simple, but it's, it's right there. I, I just love it. Yeah, it's uh, right there at your fingertips and uh, we're getting a lot of comments on the forum about, you know, perhaps adding more things to it and everything. Yeah. So that, that's yeah. great. You know, people appreciate it. So let's see. This menu contains familiar tools such as a curve surface analysis and interference detection, but also has a new tool, dihedral analysis. Dihedral analysis allows you to view the angle of deviation between two faces evaluated at an edge. On the right side of this simple model, the faces are nearly identical and therefore show a very low angle of dihedral. However, moving to the left, the faces connect at sharper and sharper angles as the curves diverge and therefore show increasing values of dihedral. The minimum and maximum value across the selection is automatically displayed both in the dialog as well as its location on screen. Threshold values may also be applied to color the combs appropriately and the scale may be adjusted. Dihedral is an important analysis tool for advanced surfacing design, 
as it helps you quickly understand how smoothly two faces are meeting. In this example of a drone frame, we can quickly verify that the top and bottom faces of the housing have nearly zero dihedral, even at critical points of importance, such as around the motor mounts. Well, this is great, you know, because, you know, it really, you know, it helps you interrogate the surfacing, making sure you have excellent, excellent surfacing. And, you know, to understand surfacing, you need a lot of tools to to really check and measure. So it's like, you know, we have curvature plots, right? We have zebra stripes. We have the the normal kind of curvature combs you see on a spline. And now we have dihedral analysis, which is really you know, in, in adding the color to it, it's kind of like the, the face color curvature map, but except on an edge, right? You know, you're seeing, you know, quantities along the edge. I love that it shows the min and max uh, right here. I wonder, you know, other ways that could be uh, utilized, but it, it, this is very powerful, very powerful. Good stuff. Yeah, I don't, I'm, you know, I don't remember seeing this in other CAD systems that we have uh, used in the past. <laughs> Uh, so this is this is really powerful, really high end, um, and this too, the S yeah, yeah. right? So you know, this, I, yeah, and and like I was mentioning before, you know, I, I'm not that great with surfacing, but this just looks so powerful right here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is stuff that you know allows you to, you know, that here here's a comment here from mm -hmm. uh, from a user on the forums, right? Very useful. Don't use an option, but when you need it, it's very difficult and impossible to work around using other. Okay, yeah. So. This is really a good point that that user brought up because you could certainly like you, you look at that curve right here, right? Yeah. You know, how, how do you get that curve? You'd need to set up a ton of construction geometry yep. to, to get that curve in. And now you're going to be able to just drop it right in. Right. So let's uh, let's see it in action. Well, uh, just uh, see. Uh, yeah, we got the what's new going. Yeah. All Nick, right. Nick, see you here. All right. So Nick. let's uh, make this full screen here. So you can see we got a sphere, and obviously, you know, if we have a, a a plane cutting through a sphere, right, that would be the result. Nice recline, yeah. uh, but then you could add a uh, an angle, right? Yep. So you're going to be able to add an angle, so you'd be able to project that back at that angle from that reference, from that direction, right? Yep. And you also have the option to additionally split, split. the faces right there. That's uh, our development team is just <laughs> so good. I mean, just these little tiny things. I mean, as soon as I saw that, it's like, well, obviously that's. Uh, I mean, looking at what what you know is happening on the screen, that's what this user is going after is to figure you know to get a split face on that on that ball somewhere. Right. Might and well the, go right is, to the next yeah. stage. Right. Yep. So here's another example that Roy's uh, putting together, picking multiple faces in this case, which is a clever you know, way of showing this. And now we're we're moving up and splitting those faces for the purpose of, you know, perhaps putting in a new uh, quilt or something on the top of that uh, or whatever it might be. Yep, yeah, I watch that. He's going to put in a new surface there. He's going to yeah. use the fill. Yeah, exactly. I thought yep. that's where he was going to be going. Now, could he have used a boundary surface there as well, Mike? No, no. no? A boundary surface would uh, require four sides only, uh, where fill is an odd number. He can do three, he can do five. Um, so good question. Yeah. I'm still learning all those differences. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the info. You're welcome. All right. So that, that will help people uh, save feature tree steps and just improve their productivity. Next up, we have something pretty interesting, right? Yeah, guess what I'm going to use this for, Mike? Ah. I'm going to set up my lumber library so I can continue working on my tiny house. Yes, yes. So this is a new function uh, made available here for frame profiles. So instead of uh, pointing people to a uh, kind of normal document that you share in the company and point people to, and you have to kind of pick every time, um, it, it will remember the last one you used, of yeah. course, if you put in a frame. But you know, instead of doing it that way, why not make it more of a company level function where you know you'd have your standard profiles in a place that people can find, and it's managed as a quote unquote library object. So that's that's what this is, right? We have frame profiles. So 
Uh, let's let's hear what Rora includes has the to say. ability to create custom profile libraries for frames. This will greatly benefit those organizations that utilize proprietary or non-standard extrusion profiles. Good point. To get started, create a folder at your documents page and name it something identifiable as your library. Makes sense. You'll then create a nested folder within this to define the name standard. You can have multiple folders at this level, each for different standards you want to manage. Yes. Okay, makes sense. Yep. I like that. Next, you'll create a document for your profiles. We've pre-created one here in the interest of saving time. The document will have one profile per part studio stored as a single closed sketch. If you need different sizes of a profile, you may configure the profile sketch to have multiple sizes. Ah, that's handy, yes. It is best practice to tag your profiles using the Tag Profiles feature. Here, you can add additional attachment points or cut list properties as well. In this example, we'll quickly just fill in the standard and description. Yeah, this will make it much easier when you use this in a cut list uh, in the future, right? Yeah, we'll just automatically Once this is complete, yeah. version your document. Finally, you'll move the document into the nested folder structure you created in the previous step before uh, closing it. That move document button coming in handy there. Yeah. Yep. That was added a few <laughs> releases back. Back at the documents page, right click on the library folder and select the option Set library, ah, my frame profiles. Now we're setting it from the documents. Page a message a will appear library. at the top of the screen and the icon on the folder will change to indicate it has been updated to your frames element library. You may now use it. When creating a frame, click the profile sketch, select your library, ah. type, profile, and optionally configure the size. There we are. For further information on setup and management of your element library, please refer to the help documentation. So yeah, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. I like the way it was uh, carried out and implemented. You have a, a, you know, an indication in the system that it's a, a library object now, which makes it easier. You don't have to tell people to point to a certain place now to um, add you know, those frame profiles. You could certainly yeah. have created a profile library before, yeah. but, you know, you, you would require you to kind of go there yourself. <laughs> exactly. exactly. We're here yeah. now, it's like pushing it toward you. Yep, this is great. And I can't wait to set up my, like I say, my two by fours, my two by sixes, those are going to be easy. Uh, you know, I do, I have a uh, profile for baseboards and now I'm thinking that my next tiny house is going to have a lot of crown molding. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you can have any shape you want, any shape you want. Yep. Thanks for every, everybody here joining us. Nice to see everybody on the show. Oh, there's Brian Lagrange. How, how's everything going down down uh, That's, Louisiana? Yeah, yeah, he's with us early today. He's down there in Louisiana. All right, let's let's go to the next. Uh, oh, let's what, what do we have in here for a spoiler? Oh yeah, all the current on shape library profiles have also been made publicly available. Okay, so there's a little uh, Easter egg here. If you wish nice. to manage your own library, you can copy them from these links below. So. That was 80-20 profiles. You know, if you use those 80-20 profiles, here they all are. You got Australian standard, ASIC. Yeah, if, you've, if, you've ever, if you've ever gone through the process of creating your own 80-20 profiles, you know that it's very labor intensive. So that's <laughs> a really nice, nice addition there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're not, you know, they're simple. They're not simple profiles, right? No, a lot not. of geometry no. uh, in them. Um, so yeah, just, uh, keep that in mind, but all those, uh, descriptions are already in here for tagging things and, uh, Beautiful. you know, it's all here. So good, good. Got insertion points for T nuts and all that good stuff in there, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. uh, you, you can totally customize that and, and do other things. Obviously it's uh, up to you for that. So, uh, let me go back to the forums. I lost that page. All right. I think we're getting to the drawing section. Yep. Yep. A lot of drawings things. So I'm going to, I'm going to come back to inspection in a second. Cause I want to show that live auxiliary views, angular dimension view indicator. Let's see this short and sweet. 
but let's uh, take a look at these angle line indicators. So, you know, we've added options recently to improve auxiliary views and set the the arrows, but um, you know, it was based on standard. I believe this will allow you to um, you know show it regardless of standard. Oh, but we've also, well, I mean, let me hear what he has to say actually. <laughs> This is back. An option was introduced allowing you to change the auxiliary yeah. view reference format to an arrow style. Right. With this release, you may now dimension directly off of that arrow oh, okay. onto <laughs> an edge of the parent model. This allows you to quickly call out the angle of that auxiliary view. Back in, back in the old days, we would we would just add that to the uh, to the view description. Yeah, you know, rotated right, yeah, exactly. rotated thirty degrees counterclockwise or something to that effect. So yeah, now this is like a nice parametric kind yeah. of way of doing it, so it stays up to date. Nice. Yeah, very nice. This one, I actually, Mike, I yeah. don't. You know, when I see these things and we get ready for these live streams, I don't usually go and try things out. I usually save that for later. I yeah. went and tried this one out. Um, and for, for, for one reason, and, and go ahead and show the video and I'll, I'll explain why after. All right. So we're doing a projected view from a section view in an isometric orientation. Okay. Cause I, I told, oh, so he held shift so we could probably move it over. Yeah, there we are. Apply parent view section cut. Wow. Yeah, and yeah, you didn't, you know, you didn't use Roy's voice on here, but you know, he talked about using the shift key. Yeah, and I didn't really catch that, and so I, I jumped over to to one of my documents and and I tried it, you know, just to to place the uh, the section view, and I didn't see an option. It, it wasn't obvious to me what was going on, so I went back to the video and oh, I got to press the shift key. So I did that, and it worked out just fine. But then I went back and I did it again without using the shift key to see if I could alter the view afterwards. And okay. sure enough, that box is right there. And okay. so I got, you know, got my section cut in the view. So there's a couple of different ways to do it. You can use the shift key to do it automatically. If for some reason you fail like I did, you can always go back and- Let's go hit the checkbox. Check okay. So a nice shortcut to, to get that. Wow. Exactly. Right. Yep. Cool. Very cool. All right, let's go to the other drawing improvement, which is uh, my favorite, the inspection table panel. This is like a game changer to me. This is like one of these like watershed moments in, in CAD and inspection is that now it's come into Onshape, the inspection stuff. Typically, and, and previously, you would export uh, a CSV kind of spreadsheet looking image for a whole uh, chart. Uh, let's actually go to this drawing from that publication. And let's go to the active workspace. So I have this, you know, spindle, you know, assembly goes on a throttle, right? You know, and, uh, you know, here's the the shaft, you know, spindle shaft that, that goes through it. And you can see I have a bunch of dimensions, uh, of course, on here. Now, if I go over here, you'll notice that we have an inspection table tab now. So this process, just to set it up, all quality control departments will take incoming inspection they'll measure all the parts cmm or pair of calipers or scan whatever whatever you know you have and uh you you measure every dimension right and you got to bubble each dimension to um correlate it with its upper and, and lower limits that are available here plus then you need to create a spreadsheet with the actual measured value okay. now look at this so here we have an inspection table now with every dimension automatically showing up here. I didn't have to do anything to make this happen. Like I made a drawing and I put dimensions on it, but then this table is already here. I did not have to do anything. Right. Okay. I didn't have to turn on an add in like you would in other systems. Okay. To, to get inspection and it and this is all here in the drawing natively right here's the type of dimension right line to line dimension so let's uh let's you can see too that 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 covers dimensions for all of the drawing sheets in this document yeah yeah because it's sheet one sheet two if i added more sheets yeah. those would show up exactly yeah. there's my nominal values for each dimension right now some of these might be hard to figure out like you know this this dimension right here 4.862, uh, upper limit is 4.912, 4.802, right? It's showing up here. Um, so that's the actual 
nominal value measured from the model. And these are the actual limits right here that I specified on the drawing. So we're actually able to see all of that. Then the next coolest thing is that I don't want to, yeah, I want to make sure I bubble everything I want to bubble. Right. right? Um, and here's the inspection item thing here. I could, you know, obviously I could go in and I click one and you see it shows up yep. and I can kind of, you know, define my own order like that or and that we've we've had that for a little while but it didn't correlate to anything over here because we didn't have a table to correlate to right, right. but if i go over here let me just uh remove this number you can remove the numbers from here and you can even add the numbers from here nice. see this so that makes it so you're not going to miss any right and it's just automatically appearing next to each one right that is so cool yeah and you know, I'll just go go through here and uh, finish them up. So that just increased. Like I, I did that a hundred times faster than I would have done it by manually picking each dimension on the screen. Okay, so now they're all bubbled appropriately, uh, and, and in a nice nice fashion too. I like that. Very clean. Yeah, and you can you know how I, you know how I am about drawings. Oh yeah, and you can move <laughs> these around of course, in the yeah. way you know, of, of a dimension or something like that. You even got each line of the whole call out and the geometric tolerance, you know, pointing to that. So, you know, it's all uh, taken care of here. Um, and I can add more, like, see, I, I wanted the material to be inspected. So yeah. I just put another bubble in it, added another row. For nice. notes, right. So it's not going to pick up on every note on your drawing. Right, right. You can tell it, which I think makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but there's the note right there, stainless steel is showing up as the item being inspected. And then, of course, you could then from here now export to a CSV and where those ellipses are and generate the inspection list as a CSV um, file. Um, downloads, where are you? There it is. And we'll bring over that uh, spreadsheet. Oh, I'm in full screen. Let's uh, get out of that. Bring that over here. And there's the uh, report, right? In a, a spreadsheet, and you can do whatever else you want with it. You know, format it to AS9102 format or PPAP or whatever format you use for inspection. Um, or put it in another uh, QMS system, Arena, maybe. You know, there, there's all sorts of possibilities now. So um this is great yep this Very is nice great. and and it's just part of on shape everybody gets it simple you know <laughs> all right <clears throat> publications improvements here on uh, the enterprise version you have advanced reports for on shape right you know if you if you haven't seen you know what you get in the uh, on shape enterprise version for reporting and analytics. It's it's something to behold. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of different things you can get out of uh, you know out of this. I'm going to get a report on my uh, my document list here. Um, you know, here is a uh, pulse oximeter, right? And I can uh, go to the uh, document or project dashboard. But new in this particular update is kind of sort of like a where used on. Uh, on where you might be using publications. So if you remember what publications are, publications that give you a way of sharing a package of things at a certain version to anybody you want, right? So instead of sharing the whole document of parts, assemblies, drawings, all that stuff, you can just, you see I have one document with three references of drawing in here, right? I have the butterfly drawing, spindle assembly drawing, I'll just bring that in. You know, and these are to versions, like you know, the last released versions. That's why you don't see the inspect, you know, the, the update dimensions that I had earlier. Of course, I could update that to, you know, you know, the latest uh, thing if I uh, push an update to it. In fact, let's just do that now because it's a nice thing to show. Sure. That's a uh, version two. And you can see the icons now have indicators yep. showing me the uh, There's an update available. Yeah, exactly. So I'll update just this one for now. 
that has all the proper dimensioning the way I had it there. Of course, I could insert the uh, CSV for inspection two and all that in this yeah. document. But all now, I I want to see every place where this spindle has been put into a publication, right? Because I might have ten publications that have sent out to ten different vendors, and I just want to kind of cor corral all that, right? That's what this is doing. So if you go to your document dashboard now. There's a section for publications referring to a document. So that's, you know, it takes a few moments for the reports to do it. So I can't show it live. It there's a, you know, it, it kind of does it in the background. Yeah. Um, but in uh, in a few minutes, you'd actually see on that particular dashboard, you know, a publication referring to that document, um, which is very good. A couple other things here: improved performance of team activity dashboards. Uh, in uh, the enterprise as well. Uh, team activity is, um, let's go to the reports. Team list. Team activity dashboard, approved supplier. Actually, let's change this to uh, engineering. That one probably has a lot more. And we'll do last uh, 45 days. Big so, report. Yeah, big report. But, you know, if I wanted to try to get this report any other way, it would probably be impossible. But yeah. Enter Enterprise on Shape Analytics provide uh, all this really deep kind of knowledge. Oh, yeah, look at this. Wow. This is a fascinating dashboard. Okay. Engineering team, 45 documents open, 32 documents edited, five drawings. That's great. Tells you anything that the team has exported and what they are and what they've shared. Like, this is like incredibly great information that can help you figure out where issues lie, what problems are going on, right? You know, uh, this is great. I can see based on the trends that somebody dropped the ball early on in this project and now they're really <laughs> trying to catch up. Catch up at the end. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and you see it's uh, Mike and Debbie working on this project. Um, so, yeah, really pretty cool to, to see this uh, kind of information. And you can just keep diving in. So it's a, it's a great tool to make better business decisions in your company. Okay. But I think that's about it for, for this uh, update before we yeah. head off in the States here to July 4th weekend. And yeah, you know, enjoy great. Great release, great comments, and uh, some really good stuff. I can't wait. You know, the first thing I'm going to go do is start building my new uh, – uh, my new frames profile standard for, uh, for yeah. tiny houses. Yeah, I got to get mine all up to date now uh, as well. Yeah, so uh, something I'll do after I come back from vacay. There you go. Well, get out of here and go enjoy the rest of your vacation. We're uh, we're actually looking at a four day weekend this weekend too that I'm looking forward to. Yeah. And uh, thanks to everybody that joined us today. Don't miss our next episode somewhere around mid July. We're looking at yeah. about July 13th or so. Michael and I will be back. And uh, thanks to everybody that joined us today. And uh, have a great holiday weekend. We'll see everybody next time. All right. See y'all later. Bye-bye.